You know, I knew it was bad. I knew the, the thoughts, but I kept it all inside. You know, we're not supposed to talk about our emotions, especially as men. You know, you're supposed to be tough, rugged, you know, you know suck it up. And I tried to hide it from everybody. Nobody knew I was having those dark thoughts. My name is Rob Nash. I'm a Canadian musician, and I've been on a tour now for nine years talking about the struggles that a lot of young people are dealing with. You know, I never wanted to be a musician. <laughs> My worst mark in school was actually music. Like, I loved music, but I just never was really that great at it. But uh, when I was uh, 17, I was in a big car accident and um, actually found with no pulse, not, not breathing, and I was obviously resuscitated. They had to rebuild my skull with metal and metal in my chest and shoulder. Um, had to relearn a lot of things, and I went through a, a really bitter time after I woke up from my coma where, you know, I didn't want to be alive. Uh, almost two and a half years where I dealt with the why me, why did, I, why did this have to happen to me? You know, I was hit by a semi-truck and everybody's telling me that everything happens for a reason and I tried to figure out the reason this happened to me and it, which brought me to a really dark place. I thought I had done something wrong and this accident was like a, a punishment of some sort. And um, one day somebody walked up to me and said, you know, Rob, I think I know the reason you were hit by a semi-truck. And I said, what is it? He goes, I think you were going too fast on an icy road. And I thought, wow. And it sounds simple, but that actually set me free. You know, I realized, you know, we're, we get to make our own choices and every once in a while, we're gonna have a bad day, it's gonna happen. And that was a bad day for me. And that two and a half years afterwards of getting through that dark time of being suicidal, I wondered how many other people are like me, they're having those same dark thoughts. You know, and our whole show was all about the fact that, hey, this is my story. You know, life could end like that, so just make every day count, right? But then one day we were called to school in uh, Ontario and uh, they heard about the work that we do, the effectiveness. And they said, we just lost a kid to suicide. Uh, can you come right away? Because on this girl's suicide note, it revealed that she had a pact. She had a deal with one of her friends. Like, if you kill yourself, I'll kill myself. They said, we don't know who it is. So we flew out to do a show. And there's, you know, let's say 500 students are in front of me. And in, I knew somebody in front of me was about to take their life. I didn't know who they were, where they were sitting. The principal didn't know, the teachers didn't know. And that was the first time I ever spoke about it. I had kept it in all those years. And from stage I said, look, I know someone here is thinking about taking their life, you know. You're not alone. I was there once too. And I was terrified. I wondered what the school would think of me, teachers, what the students would think of me. You know, because I, I thought, am I still going to be allowed to do this? Are people going to see me as weak? Because I was there once too. And I spoke and A, it felt so good to get that off my chest. And B, you know, I just saw this engagement with the crowd like never before and a young girl came up to me and she handed me a note and I was like what's this and she said it's my suicide note I was gonna kill myself this weekend she goes now I get it I got the strength I can do this I'm not alone and I brought her over um, with her suicide note to the school counselor so she could get the help that she needed and that's when I realized man I've got to tell that part of my story you know I got to keep it keep talking about it because that's what's going to draw this out of people, you know. It was like you were talking right to me, Rob, but I don't know where you're sitting. I know some of you just happened to get out of class right now, but somebody sitting here is going, man, he's talking right to me. This is exactly what I needed to hear. We'll tell a story for five, ten minutes, and then I'll play a song about that story. I'll tell a story about a girl that we met in prison once and had, you know, dealing with, you know, being trapped in the sex trade or an eating disorder. We'll tell all these stories, and then we tell that person's story, and then we perform it. We have one song that we play called The Thief of Colors. It talks about getting to that dark place where the color is gone because of depression. And uh, it's a song about dealing with, you know, suicidal thoughts and these things. And the whole video behind us. It's kids ripping up their suicide notes that have sent us their videos when they get home. I don't need this note anymore. Getting rid of their razor blades, you know, uh, dumping pills, painkillers that have taken over their life. And we, uh, we show that on the screens behind us and the kids go, okay, so there's another way out of this darkness. You know, in fact, on this tour, we've now been handed um, 883 suicide notes. Um, here's some of the ones from just this last week, you know, 
suicide notes that kids had in their pockets in class, you know. And I've spoken with police, they say that when they come on the scene of a suicide, very rarely is this note freshly written. You know, people write this note two to three months before they take their life and they carry it with them. They're waiting for somebody to push them over the edge or for somebody to reach out and, and say, you're not alone. We've had 883 of these handed to us. We've been able to bring them over to get the counselors help after the shows and stuff. And, and a lot of them tattoo the words of our songs on their arms that they used to cut. So I actually took all the signatures off of all the suicide notes we were given. And I tattooed them on all my arms because I want to be able to show people, look, I know what that feels like. You feel like you're all alone with those thoughts and you're not alone. These are all signatures of people that had those thoughts too once and they're still here and they're conquering the world around them because again, I think we're losing some of the most gifted people. When cast After talking to hundreds of thousands of teenagers, I find there's a direct connection between the arts and mental illness. I'm an artist. I express myself through song, I write. But for years I kept that bottled up inside. And I truly think that as an artist, you, you have more emotion, that you're supposed to pour into your art, whatever that art is. I think we've been given a little extra creativity, extra emotion that we are supposed to spread around to the people around us. We're supposed to channel into our music. And if we bottle it up inside, we end up either hurting ourselves or hurting somebody else, or even worse, taking your life because you feel like you're cursed with this extra emotion. And so our whole goal is to realize, you know, you're not cursed, you're gifted. That extra emotion that you have, you can pour that into other people. Because yeah, the lows can really suck, but the highs are beautiful. Like, if I could give away my emotion to skip some of those dark days and some of the tears, I wouldn't last a day out, like give me that emotion back because you know, I love, I love the fact that I can write, I can be creative and I would never want to lose that.